What is up guys, it's your boy Rick Kakis, and today we have the ultimate guide for Destiny 2 Season of the Witch, discussing everything you need to know about how this brand new season functions. From the two new activities to the Deck of Whispers, acquiring cards, quests, red borders, and more, we've got it all, and so let's get started. So. The first thing you're definitely gonna wanna do is the introductory quest that's given out. You're going to get a little bit of a taste of the two new activities as well as unlock a few starter cards, but it really doesn't do the best job of explaining everything that's going on here. So let's first break down both of the two new seasonal activities because they are gonna be where you're spending the majority of your time over the next few months starting with Savathun Spire. So this activity is broken up into encounter versus enemies, traversal, encounter, traversal, encounter. As for the encounters, you are gonna face some brand new objectives. First of all, you may encounter these arc crystals. What you have to do is punch the initial one to get charged and go over to one that's not glowing, punch that to give that one a charge. Once all of the different arc crystals are charged, you're gonna be able to progress likely. Uh, a Lucian Hive is gonna spawn you, kill it, kill its ghost and keep progressing forward. Now, some additional unique encounter mechanics include the void object in the middle of the arena that will tether you to it, preventing you from being able to move fast. Uh, you can usually stand on a platform while getting kills to kind of satisfy the void entity, or potentially you're killing the crystals that are located behind these spherical shields. And all the while, of course, you're slaying out on the enemy's mini bosses and bosses in these encounters. One additional mechanic you may also come across is going to be the solar crystals. You pick these up and you can use them to smack enemies along your way to the area you have to deposit them. And we ended up facing a boss that was one of the barons from Forsaken, so he has a bunch of decoy enemies to disguise where the real boss is. Now, importantly guys, while you're going in between these different encounters, while you're in the traversal section, there's a couple of things to know about. First of all, you're going to encounter uh, these different areas where it actually shows you three hive ruins and it presents you a bunch of different doorways to go through. Obviously, you wanna match up the doorway with the presented ruins. However, if you go through the wrong door, it doesn't really seem to do anything. Like you're gonna end up in the same spot. However, there is at least like a triumph and potentially some rewards associated with going through the right door. Now, on top of that, guys, there's actually some secret puzzles along both of the traversal sections that can give you additional rewards. As you can see right here in the first traversal section, you're gonna see these different statues holding a colored like circle. If it's purple, you shoot it with void, and as you can see, it will uncover the ruin behind it. If it is orange, you shoot it with solar, and it's going to uncover uh, the ruin behind it. Now, there isn't any arc that we encountered, but likely these are gonna rotate depending on what week it is. Now, once you shoot all of the different ruins, as you can see, a doorway will open up, and you can get the chest inside that will give you a new seasonal weapon along with the three different tiers of offerings, and we'll get to what those do in a second. Importantly, during the second traversal section, you have the same puzzle located right here with those same mechanics. Simply shoot with the corresponding element, and as you can see, that will spawn another chest just before the final uh, encounter. Now, importantly, guys, again, you're gonna get a seasonal weapon and the offerings, but that's only for the first time. On subsequent run-throughs, you will just get some reputation. So likely, this is going to reset uh, uh, either daily or weekly. Now, it should be noted that Savathun Spire potentially has even more secrets that are gonna evolve over time. In fact, in this certain boss fight, as you can see, I randomly get a weapon. Well, that was because a yellow bar shrieker apparently spawned and my teammates killed it. So just keep an eye out for all of those different things, puzzles, secret bosses, all that stuff, but on a base level, it is still just going from encounter, traversal, encounter, traversal, encounter. And importantly, upon completing a Savathun's Spire run, you're going to get those different offerings, as well as potentially you can get an opaque card. 
We're gonna talk about cards in a bit, but now let's talk about the second important activity, Altars of Summoning. This is where you're gonna be using those offerings. So upon starting an Altars of Summoning activity, you're gonna be presented with this right here, a big circle of hive ruins. And underneath each one of these ruins, you have the opportunity to interact with it. Now importantly, three of these ruins are different than the rest. And so what you actually want to do is have all three teammates activate underneath the three unique ruins. And as you can see, that will spawn a bit of ammo as well as some orbs of power to give you a head start. Now, you're then going to be directed towards a certain area, head there, and that's where you deposit your offering. So you can actually see there's one sword representing a tier one green offering. Then there's two two swords, that's a tier two blue offering, or the three swords final highest tier of offering. Depending on what offering you give, you're going to have a varying difficulties of enemies you're facing, but additionally, you're going to get more progress within that progress bar that you can see right here. So if you do a tier three offering, you should be able to get an altars of summoning activity done in three of those tier three offerings. However, if you're only using tier two offerings, it's gonna take more like four to five. However, the actual objectives that you're doing for these different offerings didn't seem to be that different. Like I do believe that we got, you know, a certain objective for tier two and that same objective for tier three, just again with tier three giving more progress. So a lot of the different mechanics that you saw within Savathun's Spire will also be present within the Altars of Summoning. So you may have those arc crystals, you may have uh, the different crystals kind of hidden behind uh, barriers, often you're going to have wizards that you have to kill, pick up the tribute and deposit them on these glowing platforms. There's a Vex one where you have to kill three different bosses all the while preventing the glowing Vex from sacrificing. There's going to be one with what feels like 10,000 Screebs, just kind of hope you don't get that one. But regardless, after you complete enough of these offerings and fill up the progress bar, you are going to get rewards as you can see. And those rewards include, you know, new seasonal loot, potentially new cards, etc. Now, importantly, this actually doesn't end. As you can see right here, you're gonna get a timer and then you can head back to the center of this overall arena and actually start this activity again. Like summon three of the different ruins, remember go for the three matching ones, and then you have to contribute even more offerings somewhere else. And if you don't get enough progress done, you'll be moved to another a different location and so on. So you can just keep doing offering after offering after offering, getting rewards every time the progress bar is filled up and then restarting so you don't have to go to orbit and matchmake every single time. If you really like the team you're with, you can just stay in there for quite a long time. However, let's move on from there and talk about that brand new Deck of Whispers system. Because as you've been doing Altars of Summoning and Savathun Spire, as well as when you do other activities like Vanguard and Crucible, you can get opaque cards. When you do, you actually need to head to the helm, go into that new area, and go to the Lectern of Divination. And as you can see, you can essentially unlock or reveal those opaque cards into what they actually are. And there's two different types of cards, major cards and minor cards. So the major cards, as you can see, you have to interact with twice, once to reveal the card and the other to collect the quest associated with that card. So these quests will have you do things like go into the Altars of Summoning, Savathun Spire, heck, even the Moon Public Event thing and complete waves, collect insight, or do whatever the heck else the objectives may be. Now, once you complete these quests, you're going to head back to the Lectern of Divination, you interact with it, and really nothing. Like, the card is just going to have a check mark beside it, but it kind of did before, and this is definitely a bit confusing. But if you actually exit out of the Lectern and turn around, you can see your major cards are stored around this circular area. So, right here, I have uh, the Sisters. 
where final blows can generate special. I have the witch that increases damage with each final blow. I've got the adherent that does something else and we keep going from there. So each of these major cards is going to appear here in the helm and have a certain effect. Now importantly, you need to collect five major cards before this whole deck building system actually comes into effect. So to collect those five cards, your best bet is Altars, Seventh Inspire, or again, another activity uh, like Crucible or whatever, trying to go after those certain cards. And then again, you will have to do the quest associated with them. But again, once I have enough of those major cards done and active, I can go back into Savathun Spire. And as you can see, when I spawn in, I have a card that's been randomly picked from my deck. In this case, it's the Witch card. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually say when you're in the activity, you just kind of have to know, but this is going to increase damage after final blows. And you'll actually see in the corner of my screen, once the activity starts, uh, then I draw that card from my deck, myself and my teammate who also unlocked it. Now, we ended up drawing the same one, but as you can see from the second encounter, we actually drew two different bonuses. And actually in the final encounter, I drew the one that spawns heavy ammo called the blade, I think. And oh my goodness, that one is absolutely insane as you can see right here. And so being able to get these insane effects is the point of the card system. Because importantly guys, as you can see, I can remove cards from my deck, right? So I still have to have a minimum amount of cards, I think four or five. But once you start collecting, you know, 10 of these major cards, you only want the minimum amount you can have because you want to narrow it down to like the four or five best possible effects that you are hoping to luck out and draw when in these activities. So those are major cards. What about minor cards? Well, sometimes your opaque card will just turn into a minor card. As you can see, these are kind of one-time effects. So some of them are actually incredible. In fact, there's a secret card hidden just back here within this area. So absolutely pick that up. And this one gave me the minor card effect called Empowered Unlocking, where using your witch's keys will award additional witch's engrams. Guys, these cards are replacing the seasonal upgrades that we normally see. So just keep that in mind. The bad news about that is that they seem to be random. Like obviously like the one that's hidden, that specific one gave a specific reward, but for most of the other ones, you get them randomly after an activity. So you're kind of just hoping to get relevant rewards. Some rewards will be so simple as it just gave me a witch's engram one time, right? So uh, again, it really depends on just how lucky you get with these cards. But moving on from there, the last thing we need to talk about is right on the other side of the lectern of divination, we have the ritual table. And this is gonna be where you're focusing your witch's engrams. So you earn witch's engrams from doing, you know, various activities all throughout the game, uh, the seasonal quests, I believe, etc., And you can focus those into specific weapons or armor. I would highly recommend going after weapons first because whenever you get get a weapon, you have the chance for it to be red bordered, which means you can unlock pattern progress towards eventually crafting these weapons, which again is more important to do first rather than get a whole set of armor that's probably going to have terrible stats off the start. Um, additionally here, as you're ranking up, you're going to get uh, a witch's key and you do have a bunch of opaque cards that are going to be rewarded from this rank up system as well. So don't forget to go here and get those cards when you unlock them. And you also have bounties here that will give additional reputation towards your ritual table you know, therefore giving you more rank up rewards and those cards sooner, etc. And so guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.